Hi folks, it's Danny. Today I want you to get a little bit nostalgic about the games you might have played when you were a kid or young. I actually did a video like this last year and asked you to comment on the games that made you feel nostalgic. So I picked 13 games from all of your comments and made on more video. So sit back and get comfortable. But before we begin, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe subscribe if you are new to the channel. Ok, let's get started. The younger generation may not have heard of the Fear Shooter series, but those were just great games in the 2000s. In fact, they were the first games that scared the crap out of us. If you haven't heard of Fear yet, let me tell you what it is about. You play as a member of a special operations team and are sent on a secret mission to clean up a special control mental institution. However, the operation does not run as planned and all the team members, except the main characters, are dead. The root of the problem is a girl named Alma, who has supernatural powers and is ready to kill everyone in her way. Of course, after scaring her prey to death, you will have to fight her and her henkman. But be careful, it is not enough to be a good shot. The back and forth I bet you heard that song count to three. Well, this is true for the Portal series too. Some loyal fans of the game are still waiting for the third part, but some others have long ago lost all hope. I just recall the previous parts. Portal is a third-person adventure puzzle game. The main character is a girl named Chill, who finds herself in a science lab that she needs to test a new weapon that makes it possible to create portals. There will be a robot GLaDOS trying to help her. He will teach her how to use portals and Jill has to use her wits to pass all the lab's mazes. Oh, by the way, the RTX support was recently added to the game, so you can replay the game with brand new feelings of better graphics. Fallout series of games has always been extremely popular, but it is Fallout New Vegas that the gamers loved the most, and it is the game that evokes the most delightful nostalgic feelings. This game is a mix of RPG and shooter in a post-apocalyptic world, namely in New Vegas, which by some miracle is not badly damaged. The main character is a courier who delivers some stuff to New Vegas, but he was Robert and buried alive just outside the city. However, he managed to survive and now he is trying to find his perpetrator. The developers did a great job and put together everything that the players liked so much in the past games of this series. There is the traditional special talent progression system, that's targeting, uh, interaction with NPCs and uh, lots of interesting dialogues. But what's most striking is the insane number of quests. By the way, write down in the comments below which quest you liked the most. Left 4 Dead is not just a game that brings back pleasant memories, it is uh, literally one of the founders of cooperative gameplay. I am sure many of you will remember the great times they had with uh, their friends there. Many of you will remember the first time they got into these huge open locations, which was destroyed by a terrible virus and how they were killing all these mutated creatures. The game's graphics are pretty old, and there are a lot of cool game to play together with your friends today. By the way, I have a video on nice co-op games here on my channel, but I think you would agree that the emotions and memories that this game gave us were just one of a kind. 
strategy lovers will remember Command and Conquer Generals. By the way, I think this game is older than many of you. It takes us to the distant future. There we fight terrorists as part of the Global Liberation Army. We are given the opportunity to participate in the execution of 7 story campaigns or to fight in single player duels by choosing a faction and customizing their game settings. The gameplay of Home and Conquer Generals was based on traditional strategy mechanics and offered large scale. Bloody battles involving hundreds of troops and units. Squads were differentiated by types of troops, characteristics, super weapons, features of resources gathering and other pyramids. Today I cannot even believe that in those days it was possible to add so much content and mechanics to the game. Surely today we will also look back at that legendary RPG Gothic. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. He was played as a hero who lived in the huge kingdom of Mitana. There was a king who wanted to create a magic dome to protect his kingdom. To do this, he had to build mines for magical ore. There he sent criminals and outcasts to do the job. The king surrounded the mines with a magical barrier to prevent escape. However, something didn't go as planned, the magic failed and the riot trained around, turning the whole valley into a realm of the most egregious criminals with their own desires and demands on the king. The players had to improve their characters, complete quests, explore the world and kill the enemies in such an unusual atmosphere. You thought there were a lot of people waiting for the test series sequel to be released? No, <laughs> no, no, no. Just look at the number of fans that the action RPG test Oblivion had. That's where the numbers were truly insane. And I hope I was able to make them think of this wonderful game. It told us about the gateway to Oblivion being opened all over the world. Oblivion is an other world that had a huge number of demons and other creatures bursting out of it, which led the world to internecine wars. To close all the portals, it was necessary to throne a man of royal blood. It would seem that no man would dare to defend the fortress, and everyone would try to save only their own lives. However, not the protagonist. He decided to find the right person to the throne to bring peace back to their motherland. And there were all literally millions of players around the world helping him to do it, some even twice or more. More. Who hasn't heard of The Simpsons? I think every one of you has seen at least one episode of the animated series, and in 2003, The Simpsons impied an entire game. The Simpsons Hit and Run, which some players called JTA for kids, and turn it into a real icon. The game had familiar characters, detailed Springfield, and the variety of quests and other great catchy content. As for the gameplay, the game was made up of a lot of me games, like races and other activities in a large open world. The devs refused to demonstrate their brutality and make it possible to die here, and even if you do something wrong, that will draw the attention of the authorities, you will be just fine. Many players genuinely loved the intense storyline, relaxed gameplay, three huge locations, the trademark Simpsons humor and of course the atmosphere, which was entirely the same as the one in the animated series. Many people are wondering then the hell is the promised remake of Prince of Persia Sands of Time going to be released? It has been postponed and reworked so many times that many fans have already given up hope and just stopped waiting. Well, maybe the developers will still manage to release the remake without making it complete crap. But anyway, let's just think back to the old Prince of Persia, the one we played as kids. It was an action adventure with third-person slasher elements in which we were told the story of a young prince who was deceived by a vile Indian vizier. He used the prince to get the dagger of time from the treasury of Maharaja of India. He decided him to release the sense of time. 
which turned the people into sand monsters and destroyed the entire city. Understanding that it was all his fault, the prince decided to put the power back into the dagger. And this is the our unforgettable adventure begins. A hallmark of the game was the ability to rewind time back a few moments to dodge enemy attacks and solve some puzzles. Also nowadays you can find such mechanics in some games. Back then it was a real breakthrough in the game mechanics. If you played strategy games in the late 19s, you will definitely remember Age of Empires 2. Many years later, this game is still an indisputable classic and uh, sets an example for many strategies even to this day. He could take control of a small settlement of a particular faction and lead it to victory and economic prosperity. The game's event were set in the Middle Ages, around the time of the fall of the Roman Empire, and right up to the Renaissance. The gameplay was insanely exciting for the time, and the battle seemed so realistic. <sighs> how wonderful it was. Games like this really make you think about how great it would be to have a time machine so you could go back to those times and erase your memory to play this masterpiece all over again. Max Payne is a real gem from the early 2000s. It's the kind of game that was really made with hurt. The game tells us about a narcotic agent, Max Payne, whose family was murdered by drug addicts. After that, he decided to get his revenge by taking out that entire drug mafia in town. However, it was not that easy. Many local cops were involved into drug business, so our protagonist had to murder not only real criminals and drug addicts, Addicts, but also his own colleagues trying to get justice. The developers didn't have much of a budget, so instead of full-fledged cutscenes, they decided to make comic strip inserts. You rarely see this type of stuff nowadays, unless it is in an indie game, but trust me, the game certainly hasn't become worse. Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell series of stealth section games has not delighted it is fans with new episodes for a long time, but it is still worth remembering at least for its former merits and contribution to the development of stealth games. The main character he is Sam Fisher, he is literally the perfect fighter, possessing the kind of unique skills that no one else can possess. He can hear even the softest sound, see in total darkness, his skin is super sensitive and stuffed with radio transmitters, and his physical shapes is second to none. He specializes in stealthy movement and silent execution of tasks and missions. Therefore, his services are just perfect for various delicate situations and anti-terrorist operations. These operations, by the way, are actually the storyline of the games. The time flies so fast. It seems like just yesterday you were playing an RPG game Dragon Age Origins, fighting with Archidemon, running in Denerim, taking quests in Orzammar, hanging around the places of Orly and studying Wikipedia, trying to figure out which companions are the coolest. I bet many of you still remember getting initiated into the Grey Guardians and helping King Kilian fight the encroaching creatures of darkness, saving Bodon and Sandal, Recruiting fighters from all other Tidas, gathering land together and electing the new ruler of Ferelden. Oh, what wonderful times this were. I mean, this is a literally a unique game. It is a heartwarming memory even after all these years, isn't it? Oh, I wish there were more games like that. However, I guess we'll end today's video on that sweet, genuinely nostalgic note. I hope you enjoyed it, and if so, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It's been Danny, see you guys soon.